Hello everyone, William here. I just had another great conversation with another guest. Would you like to come in and listen in on the conversation we had? By the way, feel free to share it with anyone you feel may find it of interest. Come on, let's go listen in now. Michael Baldessero, welcome back to my studio. Thank Thanks you. for coming in again and reaching out to me. You reached out and wanted to do some uh, clarifying on some of the things that we spoke about the last time. and I uh, wanted to offer the forum for you. Well, I appreciate it. The conversation, it was, uh, I had nobody to argue with me, so <laughs> I, I would have questioned some of my facts and stuff, and I did, in fact. So, if you don't mind, I'd just Not at all. To say Not a at few all. things just to clarify what I discussed. I was talking uh, about the sacrament appeal there, and it was Justice Borkovich. When he ruled that marijuana wasn't a defense to our, our uh, freedom of religion, wasn't a defense to even handing a joint to you as trafficking, by the way. So, I can't even share it in my religion, which is... Now, this was in 84, and the last judge we went in front of, and I, I don't even remember his name because it doesn't matter. Uh, I can get it. it will, his name will be coming up in, in some courtroom in the future. Because the Supreme Court is, just by not hearing us, this is how they uphold laws. In, unless uh, your case is uh, the issues of national importance, they don't have to deal with it. Unless you have 10,000 angry senior citizens waving their cane at Parliament, the Supreme Court isn't going to listen to you. And marijuana smokers, well, we had the 420. Who shows up? It looks like a convention for homeless children. Because anybody with a job, they can't afford to go down there at City Hall and say, hey, I smoke recreationally, because they'll lose their jobs. And I, I know people that have I've lost jobs because of a, a urine test they took. A little bit of pot and I don't care about how much alcohol was in there as usual anyway I just thought I'd clear that up the uh, the real problem is the Supreme Court is not listening they, they and sending us home just by refusing to grant leave to appeal the decision without any reasons is a violation of my charter rights and then all, everybody below them and all the levels of the police and the court seem to think that justifies what they're doing that in itself is all a violation of the Charter. So that's where I am with that. And hopefully we'll do something in, in, in the next while. A little bit of litigating in Ottawa with the Supreme Court. I have to find a way to go. It's, law is always about finding a way. <laughs> that's the biggest thing in law. So and, and I was, when I ran against Sheila Cops, it was Dr. Mancini. He's passed away now. That was the fellow that uh, she was having a debate with. And... Quite honestly, I, I didn't like what the kind of stuff she was hitting him with, and and that's one of the things that that drew me into politics because the conversation shouldn't be about smearing another person and 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 and, and ego. It should be about. I hear so much about serving the people. Yeah, I don't really see the people being served. Eh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we we got national, not just the national debt, which is. Altogether, with the province is over one point some trillion dollars. Canada is over over six hundred million itself in its national debt. And I'm not quite sure about what I said about Pierre Trudeau, but I know back then the national debt was minuscule. But it's like our our jails; it's super now, and that's a really disaster. The next step is 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 bankruptcy or throw the banks out of Canada. I mean, these are the people that have been managing our country, mm. and they get bonuses government in the United States and people go broke and the, and the government bails them out. They give these managers bonuses of millions of dollars while our food banks are empty. Mm -hmm. And then there's our government telling us to, to, to donate to our food banks and they can play around and spend money with the gas plant on votes mm -hmm. for instance. So then, and I was talking about Mostly, uh, when I'm talking about people making too much money, I'm mainly talking about the managers. I'm talking to the, the people that work in banks, the people that work in most unions and stuff. They're pretty well getting what, what they deserve. But then you get the gov some government people and some other in, in people in different areas. They're making money that it, 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 it's ridiculous. I don't think anybody can be worth a million dollars. And there's people who are paying more than millions of dollars to, to work for our government and stuff. I just don't understand I think we could hire quite a few more people and, and have the same mind. I just don't believe anybody's worth that kind of money. And uh, it's the same with the hospitals. When I'm talking to Taj Mahal, well, they, those people need modern equipment. Yes, they do. And these things, but when I look at the amount of money that's going into these buildings and the fact that I'm on a waning list sitting out here, unless it's serious, mm -hmm. which is good, but people are sitting there in pain. 
for a day, sometimes a day and a half. Like, that's, that's, th that, that's unconscionable. Do you think it has to do with the way the facility is put together, or do you think it's the way to, uh, or is it? Um, well, they're pain managers of the hospitals, <coughs> millions of dollars. Like, uh, there, there's so much money that's going, and, and, and because of the way we train doctors, when, when these, these peop young men and women become doctors, they have to make an awful lot of money, and, but the system has to change. I'm not going to say we just cut that off, and, mm -hmm. but the system has to change where we pay for their education. So when they come out, everybody's making, you're working harder than someone else and it took you more, you gotta, you're entitled to more of the cake. Mm -hmm. Everybody's entitled to the piece of the pie, but depending on what, what you want to go through, because the guy's a heart surgeon or a brain surgeon, surely, you know, he's got to, he needs more, a little bit, a uh, few more luxuries than the other person. But again, that's some of the, 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 the some of the managers in that are just getting phenomenal mm -hmm. wages and benefits. And when I say when it comes to the city, and not I'm talking about the city employees, mm -hmm. I'm talking about the managers. Mm -hmm. How would you decide what the pay scale would be? What kind of a format would you use for? Well, anything over the sunshine that? list is uh, is an awful lot of money for one person to mm -hmm. make a hundred thousand uh, dollars. Even if they're doing overtime, if we've got that many cops on the sunshine list, maybe we should hire some more of them. Mm -hmm. And we're paying for so many of them to go to court and sit in courts. It's weird that if uh, in China and some other countries, people that violate the law, they're tried within a week and their heads are cut off. <laughs> <laughs> in, in Canada, it takes 20 years for them to give you the death sentence in the United States to mm -hmm. get you from the courtroom to the, to the chair or the injection site. And uh, it's the same here. We spend a million dollars on some asshole, for lack of a better world, word that like that did the Bosmas in, etc., mm -hmm. etc. And he's sitting in there costing us a, an arm and a leg. I don't understand why it's going to take a year to get him, or two years to get him to court. Yeah, I think they call it due process, and I don't know what all that overdue involved, process. Overdue I've been process. in these courtrooms mm -hmm. when we sued Cadillac Fairview from the day, the moment they the. Uh, their security guards at Eastgate Square, viol Square violated Reverend Tucker and myself. They it took. I was in front of a jury of twelve in a year. I did that on paper. Didn't cost me a, the kind of money a lawyer would have charged a hundred thousand dollars for that kind of stuff. In fact, we lost the first trial. And we got the bill. It was twenty-five thousand dollars. We spent ten days in the courtroom, and the guy didn't. Big Toronto lawyer, and but we went on appeal. We went through three judges of the divisional court, who and then it took about a half hour to get them to call us reverends. We were calling them your lordships, and we said, if you want to get on a first name basis, okay, but this is disrespectful. And they they went out, turned around, came in. They said Reverend Tucker, and that was now we got onto it. They they threw it out. But, but what it was, we see when the court of appeal had made a law that the security guards can arrest you. That the Court of Appeal upheld that. Now, until it went to the Supreme Court of Canada, Justice, uh, his name is Lofchuk, who heard that trial. It wasn't Shime. It was Shime was uh, is our Chief Justice. But Lofchuk heard the trial. We appealed him, and I, I got in front of me. I, I said, "Well, you were wrong." He says, "No, I wasn't," and I had to agree with that because when the Court of Appeal said, "This is how it is." He has to do whatever he has to do, including chopping your head off with the chopping block, with the crown. He's got the axe, right? Because this is the law. Even though the Supreme Court of Canada hasn't decided yet if the Court of Appeal for Ontario is right, and it was found in our favor on the case we cited, we were right. Security cards are not allowed to arrest you. They need a police officer, which is probably one of the reasons they're getting rid of them as many malls as they can as well which as you can see from this mess over here, the center mall, it's, uh, I, I'm lost for words at describing the, the horrors that they, uh, we had a Santa Claus, we had a community center, even the police had a little booth there. It was nice, you could spend the day there and it was community, community, community. Now we got an auto mall and when gas is so expensive you can't afford it. Who wants to walk from Ottawa Street to Kenilworth from store to store? Mm -hmm. I'm watching people know it's a horror. Yeah. This is the good, this is our leadership from our council. Reverend Tucker and I went to the council and asked them to save it as a heritage building. Obviously there's things going on behind the scenes that I can't see unless I'm the mayor. This is why I want to be the mayor because I feel like everybody else. What you look and you go what the what the like how did that happen? 
No big mm -hmm. box stores won election. That's all we got is big box stores. Mm -hmm. Just look around. The Red Hill Creek. That happened. I was there back in, <laughs> way back in time. We even had a trailer, on, uh, trailers parked on, uh, and, and the community come in and look at it and this and that. And it's still in and because that's how it's going to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you said you had some things from our last conversation. Well, yeah. Um, well, um, you had mentioned um, about voting for your children or giving the children the vote. Yes. And voting for your children. And I was thinking about it after uh, we, we left. And uh, I, I don't know if it makes sense or not, but it was just a thought. And I thought <coughs> if the children, if the parents voted for the children, let's say you've got three children. Yes. And you're voting for your children. Yes. Well, you're going to, it's going to create a dialogue with those children because yes. now you're going to vote with them. So you're going to sit at the table and say, you know, these are the issues. This is what I think. When they become of, of a reasonable age, to they like to comprehend, right? Yes. And now uh, when they turn 18, they're going to want to take that right from you more than just have it. Oh, I would have grabbed it at seven. But no, but I'm saying it, it, it creates something that it's like being able to uh, drive at 16. When, yes. when I was a kid and I was 15 years old, I couldn't wait till I was 16. Yes. I was going to drive a car. Yes. Well, if you have dialogue and you're using, if you're my parent and you're uh -huh. using my vote to vote the way you want to, yes. I can't wait till I can do it for myself. Oh no, as soon as I want to, I'm empowered. That's <laughs> and the... It's encouraging yes. to get them involved in the process. Well, they are, yeah. Right. And they're even more involved in it because mm. I have something that I can hand them or they can take from me as a parent. And my kid doesn't want to take something from their parents that belongs to them. The if I own a car, I don't want you driving it. No. I can't wait till I'm old enough and then you don't have to drive or my car. Or until you can make up your mind that, like, see, in the beginning, it, there was no age to driving. <laughs> right. No, that's right. Well, there was only two cars and they ran into each other. Apparently. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> But yeah, I understand what you're saying. Uh, yeah, so I found that an interesting point when, when you had left, and I, I let that marinate in my head for a little bit. I thought that would be... Uh, the word that Reverend Tucker found was empower, empowerment <laughs> to the youth. <laughs> Something that they can say, hey, I, maybe I'm only seven, but I'm uh, like a virtuoso. Yeah. You know, and just like yeah. some can play the piano, other kids well, can... Well, the out-of-the-mouth-of-babes kind of things. That's all right. Things when too, they right? want it. No. Yeah. Okay, then let's sit down, son or daughter, and we'll have a talk about why mom likes this guy and why I like that guy. Where are you going? Mm -hmm. The nice thing about it is you don't have to disclose. Mm -hmm. The vote is yours. Right. You don't have to tell your mother and father who you mm -hmm. voted for. Right. And they don't have to tell you. Yeah. Yeah, it'd yeah. get interesting. Inst it would. Inst yeah, it would be interesting. Yeah. I, I, I'd like to see, um, I know some arguments might be, you know, people with uh, 21 children have a large amount of votes. Well, they have a large you know, amount of responsibility under have, the criminal exactly, code. <laughs> exactly. Right. So yeah, it, it was yeah. a, it, an interesting topic. When you brought it up, uh, it kind of stuck in my head. And I, Well, I, I've been saying it all this for a long time, and uh, I'm hoping it'll catch on one day because what's mm -hmm. happening isn't working. And again, super jails are the proof that we have failed. Mm -hmm. We have failed our children. No, if we can engage our children. Um, and very young. In a good, positive way. Well, hopefully. they actually have... Uh, we, hopefully. It's going we all think that we're, we're engaging our children in a positive way, uh, and sometimes it's not. And uh, Just to be able to examine those things. We have no way to engage them right now. You're not allowed to hit them. Mm -hmm. so well, I don't know if hitting them is engaging them, but... Well, when I was a kid, I was engaged. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> well, you were hit. Not over-engaged, <laughs> because no. but my father knew where yeah. to lay the law down, and yeah. he didn't like having to get the strap out, but if I mm -hmm. needed to be uh, yeah. put on the right path, he was there to do it. And, well, when you speak about uh, empowerment, uh, Reverend Tucker spoke about empowerment. Um, knowledge is power. Yes. So letting, ha having dialogue uh, with our children and uh, communicating them and allowing them to express themselves openly without any mental or physical abuse coming on because they have an opinion and making their uh, decisions for themselves somewhat. Uh, so articulating between one another um, and letting them, you know, older people will have an experience. Oh, that would really change in the face of kindergarten. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At a certain age, I was, this is the newspaper when I was a kid, we had morning and evening editions of The Spectator. Sure. So I would go through the paper. Everybody's going to advance it. When they're read, when I was ready to vote, I shouldn't have had to wait till I was old enough to drink or 18 or 19. Mm -hmm. It should have been when I was old enough to, that, to want to vote, mm -hmm. to want to get interest. Because I know a lot of people my age, at 65, 
they're not even interested in voting at this they never so I know people that have never voted mm -hmm. and, uh, and and that's too bad because when you talk about unions and I'm saying to all the union people the biggest union we have is the Union of Canada mm -hmm. that's what Canada is supposed to be and our union is being mismanaged would would you the people and the members of the unions put up with this from your union reps I don't think so I think they'd be voted out and then unless people get interested in the one way to make you interested in voting it's really simple if the government really wanted us to vote all they would do is say well, you didn't vote you don't get no OPIP card you have to participate mm -hmm. and make it so easy to participate welcome aboard right mm -hmm. but you gotta vote and if you did you're entitled to all the services of that of our government that's all you're either got a union card or you don't and the union isn't locking anybody out <laughs> as it is now there's there's ways to be cut off from government surface services through criminal activities and sure. different things that that could happen to you so now I, I believe in strong unions otherwise and and the Union of Canada is the strongest and mm -hmm. I like all the unions I'm a member of the International Union of Operating Engineers somebody's got to hold everybody's the, the <laughs> nose to the grindstone mm -hmm. a fair wage is what's needed yes but again, if we're paying our, our leaders and their people five to ten times more than we're paying sure. other people, like the same caliber. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. What were some of the other things that you wanted to discuss, Michael? Well, that was pretty much, let's see. Oh, yeah, we were talking about uh, fluoride. I looked up fluoride on, on, on Wiki there, and it's pretty toxic stuff when it comes to the bones. In large doses, it's in, in, in not too large doses, it's fatal as well. So just because we're going to save a little money over, over our teeth. And like I said earlier, fix the teeth. I don't need, I grew up without fluoride. I went to the dentist and if I brushed better, I'd have fewer cavities. That's, look mm -hmm. after the teeth you know, and teach people to do stuff like this. We don't learn enough in school. It should be more like a lot, of, lot more marching around and learning to get along with others because we can't really, you're either going to pay to teach children, you're going to pay to incarcerate them when they get older. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and they're, uh, being incarcerated as young as 12 years old or some little kids make some horrible stuff happen, eh? Yeah. And usually there's alcohol in the home. So in some sodium fluoride can cause pain in the legs and irritate the stomach and, and, and they have slow release stuff that when they're using it for to treat osteoporosis uh, milder and less frequent complications in the bones and lower doses for water fluoridation the only clear adverse effect is dental fluorosis which can alter the appearance of children's teeth during development mostly mild and likely to represent any real effect or aesthetic appearance or in the public on the public health but like peanuts kill kids. <laughs> Here they are. So now you can have a little bit of fluoride, even though it does cause have an effect on your teeth. And your teeth mm. are calcium. If it's affecting your teeth, you don't think it's affecting the bones? Mm. They have no idea what this. It's not. It's like remember you read a formaldehyde. Yes. They paid us to put it in their homes, and then they paid us to take it out. Yeah, same with vermiculite. It had asbestos in it. Yeah, and they've killed, well, Reverend Tucker. That's what killed him. Oh, is that right? Yeah, he had mesothemiola. He was an electrician. He built. Uh, terminal towers downtown mm -hmm. and the electricians used to have to call between the ceilings with all the pipes were all okay, coated yeah. in that stuff right? sure. a lot, and most of the guys he worked with died 10 years before him and what why he didn't he used to cough a lot and that was from that in his lungs but the smoking marijuana helped him cough that stuff up mm -hmm. and it coated his lungs with oil and that oil is bio is is, is not like to nicotine it, it you can't wash nicotine off your hands but you can wash marijuana oil so it's much more biodegradable in fact I think it improves it, it makes the lungs more likely to absorb oxygen the reason they give people marijuana to smoke when they have glaucoma is to put more blood in their eyes hmm. <laughs> so when you smoke a joint of marijuana you're putting more blood in your brain so you think people think faster and time seems to slow down that's mm -hmm. all because your brains, and this is why people with a heart condition should watch how much they're taking, because it does increase your your whole your whole being. But that's okay. I know I've had a heart attack, but it wasn't from 
it's nothing to be concerned with in that regard. There's, there's a lot of things, valves and things people... I only had a bone pressing on my heart when I got crushed. Oh. And my osteopathy released the tension. But the guys over here, they, they had to go in there and unplug the artery or I'd have been dead. The osteopath oh. would have never seen me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we have a school of osteopathy in Hamilton and they're always looking for... They have a student clinic and they're always looking for people to come in. They do really good work right. and it's free. Right. So just for people who have issues that and they'll work on a bad them? back. Yeah. Oh, okay. Just call the osteopathic school. They're across the street from Tim Hortons on Ottawa and they have a student clinic on Bar Melvin and Parkdale area. Oh, very good. On Melvin, yeah. And it's free. Yeah, I go twice <coughs> a month. Well, a friend of mine just had a bad back and I got him back to work just by sending him there on one visit. So they do like therapy? Uh, he's, a, he's a landscaper. Um, no, they exercise? manipulate you. Oh, okay. To, very gently too. Like chiropractic? Oh, way you? beyond that. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Oh, yeah. interesting. It's, and, and mm. many of the students are already registered mas uh, massage therapists, and okay. then they study the uh, osteopathy is going to you're going to see a lot of it because they've got they're pumping out students, and uh, mm. it's a four year course, so it's a little more a little, and it's not to put osteopathy down. I've had been to them too, but it, it's completely different, and mm. it, it, to me it seems to to do for me it works better. Yeah. So there's an awful lot of things I'm finding uh, through this forum in meeting people of things that this city has to offer uh, that are quite philanthropic. Yes. Uh, and uh, people aren't aware of, so it's a great thing. Oh, Hamilton is uh, the greatest city in the world or I wouldn't be here. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm finding it, uh, yeah. uh, um, it's really pleasurable to live here as well. The people mm -hmm. are, I've said this before in many forms, and uh, I'm, I'm enjoying the, the culture. Well, I see though we have a lot of trouble downtown because now they're bringing in a lot of people from out of town. We're building mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, the suburbs, that should never have happened anyway. Most of them are too far out to be serviced. Okay. And they're going to start finally charging industry what it's worth to put the sewers and the roads in if they want to put something in way out. Sure. Because all that's got to go down to the east end to where we treat it. It's all, right. it's all on our, our, our expense. So. Yeah, very good. Well, Michael, once again, it was a pleasure having a conversation with you. I'm glad that you came back. And clarified some names. And oh, I had some to. I don't want the people to think that, that. I think it's everybody is getting too much. In a way, we are. Like they go back thirty to forty years, and you see. But again, it's mismanagement that that's led to our need for more money because everything keeps going up uncontrollably. Mm -hmm. And that's what uh, why I want to be the mayor. I think I can put some stops to that and do a little controlling. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, it'll certainly be interesting to see how the race goes. Oh, yeah. Uh, for mayor. Okay. There's uh, quite a few people running for it. I hope to speak to every one of them. Yes. If they, uh, yes, if there's they some make talent it in, so. in this, uh, this race. It's, it's yeah, really there good. Is, we even sure. have a lady, a lovely mm -hmm. lady. That's yeah. really good. In the wards as well. There's a lot of people yeah. who are starting to get engaged. And yeah, I understand why women don't want in on it, though. It's like <laughs> football. <Yeah. laughs> You're going to do that football thing again with a large woman? <laughs> well, I'm going to watch Crystal. Yeah, she's, very good. She's a good girl. She right. should be okay. Very good. Yeah. All right. Thanks again, Michael. God bless. Join us. Catch the bug.